The American Stroke Association, American Heart Association, uses the term FAST or uses the acronym FAST and face, arm, speech, time. Now, we've added a B to the front of that, so we say B fast, and the B is for balance. Okay, so if somebody becomes acutely out of balance and can't walk or is very staggery, dizzy. Those type of symptoms may be associated with what's called a posterior circulation stroke. And then clearly if face, arm, speech, and time. So people that are having acute stroke, you might notice that the one side of their face just looks like it's limp or not moving where the other side of their face looks normal. That's, that's a very specific sign of a stroke. Clearly if somebody can't speak or their speech is garbled, um, that's, that's another very acute sign of a stroke, very specific sign of a stroke. Um, arm weakness, leg weakness, inability to use an arm or a leg, okay? Uh, you might be speaking to somebody and they can't understand this, what you're saying to them. So they might not be able to speak, they may not be able to understand what you're saying to them. Again, another one of those signs of stroke. Um, so I, I just stress to people, get to the hospital as quick as possible and be evaluated. Um, we're, well-versed in triaging of patients as they come in. And that triage is different the, than what you might see for a heart attack. Somebody walks in uh, with stroke symptoms, first thing we wanna do is we wanna divide those people into, are you having an ischemic stroke? Okay, and the term ischemia means that we've uh, somehow cut the blood supply off to a certain part of the brain. Okay, so a part of the brain that should be getting blood flow is no longer getting blood flow or the amount of blood flow it should have been getting. Okay. And once you drop below that critical threshold, then the nerve cells, sort of like the electricity in your house, you know, we, we talk about having a brownout. We may not have lost all of our electricity, but all of a sudden now our lights are very dim. Okay, and that's that might be a situation where we're getting some blood flow there, but we're not getting as much blood flow as we need. And if we can restore that blood flow, we can turn the lights back on again. And the other type of stroke that we see is something called a hemorrhagic stroke. Okay, typically we see hemorrhagic strokes in patients that have had high blood pressure, and then a small blood vessel in the brain will rupture and cause you to have a little bleed. And it might be a very small, it looks like a little hair, uh, these blood vessels do, they're very tiny. And sometimes you can have a little hole in your heart that will allow blood clots that actually occur in your body in the periphery in a vein that would go back to your heart and normally might go out to the lung, but it can cross from the right side of your heart to the left side of your heart. And then when it goes to the left side of your heart, then there's some probability that it can go to your brain and cause a stroke. Other causes might be if you had atrial fibrillation, okay, and that's one of the major causes. People's heart uh, rhythm is not correct, okay, and there's a little uh, pouch on the left side of your heart on the atrium, it's called the left atrial appendage, and that's a common place for blood clot to form. And if that clot breaks out of that atrial appendage, it can go and then go to the brain and cause you to have a stroke. Sometimes in, in a situation where there'll be a lot of bleeding, you might have to have surgery to have that removed. Okay, um, but more often than not, these are tiny little microscopic bleeds um, that occur in the brain and, ca and cut blood flow off. But unlike the ischemic stroke, we can't go in and restore blood flow in that situation. So that, that's where we have to triage the patients and decide what type of stroke they might be having. You know, fortunately, technology's come a long way in my, in my career and we're able to get up there now with different devices and catheters and, and take clots out of the brain and restore blood flow and. Um, it really, it, it's very beneficial to people. So they, they have, uh, you know, decreases the morbidity and mortality of stroke and, and saves function. Uh, somebody that, you know, before might have ended up in a nursing home or not able to do or speak or something like that and go back home and take care of themselves. And that's, that's really rewarding when you're able to do that.